Striker Scorpion 82 is now sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards, a card battle game featuring your favourite Citadel miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your army decks, dominate opponents in player versus player action, collect and upgrade cards to fit your strategy, improve their power and unlock unique traits. Choose from all 40k factions, take part in campaigns based on iconic 40k battles, rise to the top of the leaderboard and win glory. Free to download and play, link is in the video description below or on the channel homepage and by using the unique link it helps support the channel. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this uh, review. It's part two of the new Psychic Awakening book, Saga of the Beast. Part one is for the Space Wolves. Check out all the lowdown for that one in that video. And then uh, in part two here, we'll focus in on the Orcs. So just splitting the uh, review into two parts just to make it easier for everybody. Uh, so we've already reviewed, reviewed the Space Wolves. And I think they've done really well. They've got a great uh, character there, Ragnar Blackmane. Fantastic stat line, amazing model. So excellent. Uh, some great stratagems and extra rules for the space halls. I think it's a great job for them. Uh, but we'll take a look at the orcs next. Uh, and again, uh, I have an orc army, one of my favourite armies on the channel. Uh, Gut Rippers, lads. We'll see if there's any bonuses here. Uh, so it will be like a full review. Tactica, we'll go through all the pages here uh, and pick out the relevant information. A big thank you to Games Workshop, they sent me this copy uh, ahead of time, so thank you to them for that. Uh, but check out gamingfigures.com, you can get a hold of your 40k stuff from them at a discounted rate uh, and other gaming systems uh, available from them as well. So, the Orcs. Played a lot of games with them last season, about 12 games, so loads and loads of battles. Uh, but they've yet to play any of the Season 8 games here, I've yet to assemble an army uh, and put them together. So we'll turn up the Orcs here. So some amazing new models, then all the buggies and so on. Uh, some amazing stuff. So, uh, new and updated units. Specifically, I mean the main ones, obviously, uh, Guzcar, uh, Fracker, Strashams, uh, Specialist Mobs, so it lets you create your own uh, mob here, special rules, so I run Goths, but they'll give you uh, some different options that you can go for there with that. Uh, custom jobs as well, so you can customise your vehicles a little bit as well. Uh, and then clan specific psychic powers also, and you've got your random name generator there as well. So some tasty stuff here for the Orcs. So, Guzcal Fracker, there's the, the model there. Absolutely, for an infantry model, utterly huge. Completely ridiculous and over the top, but that's I think what you're looking for with the Orcs. So. There he is. So, stat line then is power level 14. He is a beast, and I reckon the way they've worked this. Yeah, there's no points values, so I reckon. Oh, here he is, sorry, no, it's here. Ghost Cow is at 285 points, and then if you're going to take Makari, it's an extra 65 points on top of that as well. Uh, and they've got points for the. Big mech with custom force field also, which is good news actually, because I was going to drop, it's one of the characters in my Orc army, uh, Napoleon Git Smasher I've called him, uh, and I thought he was going to become a legend and dropped out, but they have put him in, custom force field, yeah, not in Megrama, so, excellent, 
come to him in just a moment, but he's now a proper choice to take, which is good news. So I might be able to keep my grand battery idea that I have for my Orcs uh, in that list. But Gus Carl Fracker, uh, 14 power level, 285 points. For that you get, he is uh, broken down into wounds brackets here because of the number of wounds he has. He's got 12, so he starts off at 7 inch move. Uh, then a 6 inch, then a 5 inch move, strength 7, 6, and then 5, and then it's... Uh, that's right. He starts at 5 attacks, and he starts getting more attacks if he takes wounds, so uh, he drops the damage bracket, he actually gets 6, and then on his last 2 wounds he actually goes up to 7 attacks. <laughs> and his weapon skill stays the same. Oh boy. Okay, so 2 plus. Blissed skill 5 plus. His toughness 7. So he's, he's a walking tank. 12 wounds. Uh, variable amount of attacks, leadership 8, and a 2 up save. So he's equipped with Mork's Roar, Gork's Claw, Stick Bombs. Uh, so Mork's Roar is the gun, range 36, assault 12, strength 5, AP minus 1, and 1 damage. So a nice bit of Daka there. Uh, and then Gork's Claw in close combat, times 2 strength. So it is full strength, will be fighting at strength 14, AP minus 4. And four damage. Oh, so excellent. Um, no ability to add on mortal wounds, though. You know, like a deadly claw that's going to bypass invun saves and so on. But uh, and it's it's de decent enough. Stick bombs as well. Uh, here we go. So rerolling one of the dice when you charge, I believe. Mob brawl. Daka daka daka. So six is pop extra hits, and he's got a nice daiquiri gun there to get extra uh, shots there. Also, uh, the great war then. Uh, friendly orc infantry units within six of this model can be chosen to charge with even if they advance this turn. This is like a war boss. In addition, add one to the attacks characteristic of models of friendly orc infantry units whilst they're within six inches of this model uh, if they make a charge with this turn. It's a bonus extra attack as well, so that's a good buff. Uh, the boss is watching. When a friendly orc unit within six inches of this model fails morale test, this model can restore order in a brutal display of violence. If it does, it's D3 mortal wounds and the round test is passed. So there you go. So again, same as um, War Boss. Profit of Gork and Mork. Uh, it's a 4 plus in one save. In addition, this model can only lose a maximum of 4 wounds in each phase. So you've gradually got to bring him down. You've got to shoot him up a little bit and then hack him a little bit in close combat and then hack him a bit more and shoot him a bit more to gradually bring him down. You can't bring him down in one flurry. Uh, of close combat or a great display of firepower. It's a, it's capped here at four wounds in each phase. It makes it makes them difficult to get rid of. Yeah, especially if you're Tau, you got no chance of bringing down the psychic phase. No chance, usually in close combat. So you've got to wait <laughs> three turns to try and uh, bring him down. <laughs> so, that's very awkward that one interesting rule uh, Goffs is the best is the next rule reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by melee weapons by models in friendly uh, Goff orc units so you can benefit other clans but uh, the bonus there for Goffs uh, which is what I run at the moment and then the Grand War Boss this model can be included in an orc detachment without preventing other units from that detachment from gaining a clan culture note however this model does not benefit from any clan culture unless the clan culture selected that detachment is Goffs but uh, yeah, he's excellent. Solid as a rock. And uh, a crazy model. Yep. Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. There's a Primaris head there on the base. So fully updated here. So Makari then, a little sidekick git. Power level 3. 65 points. Quite expensive. Uh, for that you get movement 5. Uh, weapon skill 4 plus, ballistic skill 4 plus, strength 3, toughness 3, 4 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 6, and a 6 up save. Uh, single model armed, armed with Makari's stabber. And that is strength user, strength 3, AP 0, 1 damage. Resolve an attack made by this weapon, a modified wound roll of 6 plus, inflicts D3 mortal wounds on the target, and the attack sequence ends. So, a little bit of potential there to do some damage. Uh, then, Guzikal's Warg Banner. When a model in a friendly goth orc unit within 6 inches of this model would lose a wound. And this model is within 3 inches of a friendly Guzkar Fracker unit. So you've got to hang around together or 1d6 and 6 plus the wound is not lost. So 6 plus feel no pain bubble if units nearby. Um, right, okay. 
yeah, one of the things about this, they're capping it at four damage. I think it's pretty good because, yes, he's a character, but he's got 12 wounds here, so he can be shot at by people. Um, and not you can't hide away uh, like other characters who have less wounds. So that I think that's sensible enough. Okay. Uh, so, accidental figurehead. Friendly Goth Gretchen units can use this model's leadership, which is six instead of their own. Master in 12 inches of this model. Uh, suspiciously lucky. He's got a two plus in one save. <laughs> okay. Oh dear. And then keep up. At the, end of the, at the start of your movement phase, this model is within three inches of a friendly Goth Scarf Wrecker. Unit add two to this move characteristic until the end of the phase. Right, so you can keep up. Okay, interesting. Clever. Right, so yeah, the two belong together, that's for sure. Two up in one save. Huh. Interesting stuff. So, Big Mech, the custom force field then. I think the rules are going to be pretty much the same. Uh, but they've just enabled it to become a choice again. It's, it's, I think this one's absent from the regular Orc uh, Codex, so it's now back again. Which is great news. Or they were people were worried that he'd been made a legend, but now he's back again, so... Uh, that's the rules there for him, and the cost is 55 points, and 4 points if you take a Grot Euler. So, new stratagems for the Orcs. Two pages of new stratagems. Some pretty good ones for the Orcs already, some pretty potent ones. Uh, so, Custom Job is the first one here. It's one command point. Most of these are one command point here. It's a couple at two. Uh, it's a custom job. Use a stratagem before the battle. Your army can have one additional custom job. All the custom jobs that you include must be different and be given to different unit types or different units. Be given to different units. Uh, next, one command point for the cleverest boss. Use this stratagem before the battle. Select one big mech model from your army. Add one to that model's wounds and attacks characteristic and change its weapon skill to 2+. plus. You can only use this stratagem once for battle and only if your army does not include uh, mech boss buzz gob so you can boost him up a little bit good idea uh, grot bumper one command point use a strash from your opponent's shooting phase and attack is made with a ranged weapon successfully wound wounds well right when a, an attack made by a ranged weapon successfully wounds a boom daka snaz wagon model in your army the saving throws automatically pass do not roll each unit can only benefit from the strash from once per battle an interesting one that one temperamental shock drive one command point use this strash in your shooting phase after shooting with a shock jump dragster unit from your army this unit immediately advances and the result this unit immediately advances and the result is a four plus do not roll okay uh, the biggest boss one command point, use this stratagem before the battle, select one war boss model from your army, add one to that model's wounds and attacks characteristic and gains a 4 plus in one save. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, that's pretty good. Gut Ripper's got an upgrade. Gut Ripper's has just got, got harder, he's got tougher. You can only use this strategy once for battle and only if your army does not include Guzcar Fracker. So, I don't go for Guzcar Fracker, and uh, I, that is a fantastic upgrade. An extra attack, yep, extra wound, and a 4 plus in one save for one command point. Absolute bargain, that's fantastic, brilliant, brilliant. Strash that one, the biggest boss. Yep, okay, that's uh, great news that one, that's really good that. Uh, Next one, one command point, Clever Spanner. <laughs> Use this strategy before the battle. Select one Looters or Burner Boys unit for army that contains nine or less models for one command point, or one Looters or Burner Boys unit for army that contains ten or more models for two command points. Whilst the unit contains one or more Spanners, you can roll one additional dice and discard one with determine the number of shots for Burners or Death Guns equipped the models in that unit. Each unit can only be selected for this strategy once per battle. So that's yeah, helpful. Uh, one command point, the burning highway. <laughs> Use this stretch from your shooting phase with a custom booster blast unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. You, until the start of your next turn, change the characteristic of that unit's burner exhaust as follows. Range 10, assault 3, strength 5, AP minus 1. 
A bit of a boost for that one. Next one, one command point is a flying headbutt. Use this strategy at the end of your movement phase. Select one orc unit from your army that has the flyer battlefield role. That model can be reduced to zero. Oh. That's like a kamikaze attack. That model is reduced to zero wounds and automatically crashes and burns. Oh. Wow, that's a great stratagem. So I was complaining about too many stratagems, but these ones are great. These ones are, are good, good fun ones here for the orcs and pretty potent here. Yeah, what's very cool is it's the end of your movement phase. So you go in for this kamikaze dive, position the flyer exactly where you want it and then just detonate it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh boy. <laughs> Great. Amazing. Flying head butt. Uh, full speed lads, one command point. Use the strash from your charge phase after charging with an orc biker or death killer war trike unit for your army until the end of the turn. Add one to the unit strength characteristic. Bit of a bonus there. Squig bombs, one command point. Use the strash from your movement phase after moving a blitzer bomber model from your army. To the end of that phase, add one to, uh, to rolls made for that model's boom bomb ability. Then, uh, special shells, two command points. Use this strategy from your shooting phase when a flash gets unit from is chosen to shoot with. To end that phase, increase the range of SNAS guns models in the unit by 12 inches. Of course, got quite a lot of command points for that one. Just to increase your range. Uh, patch up, one command point. Use this strategy at the start of any turn. Select one Morkonaut, Gorkonaut, or Stomper unit from your army. At the end of the turn, that model is considered to have double the number of wounds remaining for the purposes of determining what role, what row to use in its damage table. So yeah, helpful, I've got a help there. One command point for that. Unstoppable momentum, two command points. Use this strategy from your charge phase when an orc unit from your army has finished a charge move and dealt one or more mortal wounds to an enemy unit. If that orc unit is no longer within an inch of an enemy unit, it can immediately be chosen to charge with again. Ah. Yeah, tactically useful if you're trying to make sure that attack goes in. Yeah, it's to help prevent that you take some mortal, cause some mortal wounds, the opponent cleverly removes the front models, then all of a sudden you find yourself over an inch away. Um, well, that helps you push in deeper. Uh, wildfire then, one command point, use a stratagem in your movement phase after selecting an enemy unit for the burner bombs ability or a burner bomber unit from your army. Select one other enemy unit within six inches of the unit you selected. Roll 1d6 for each model in that additional unit to a maximum of 10. Each 5 plus is a mortal wound, and the stratagem is not affected by the arsonist's subculture. So it's that one. Uh, dreaded Death Machine. One command point. Use the stratagem in the fight phase. When a Death Dreads unit from your army is chosen to fight to the end of the phase, each time an enemy model is destroyed as a result of an attack made by that unit, you can immediately make an additional attack against the same target using the same weapon. These additional attacks cannot generate further attacks. That's excellent. Death Dread. I have mo I have uh, that model sitting about to build. I could maybe construct that and, and put it into an updated list. Because that's a pretty good stress from that one. Kill a load of models and that's the number of attacks you then get. Brilliant. As the insane orc piloting the Death Dread kills more enemies, the more frenzied they become. Great. Uh, last one here. Hit them harder. One command point, use the strash from the fight phase when a mega knobs unit from your army is chosen to fight with. To end of that phase, add one to the damage characteristic of melee weapons uh, that unit is equipped with. Yeah, useful enough. Try and take down a vehicle. Plus one to all your damage rolls. So kill swords damage for three, or D3 plus one for the kill claws. Killer claws, yeah. Power claw, sorry, whatever it's called. It's plus one damage. Great. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so, yeah, it's a brilliant strategy set. Uh, as, as with the Space Wolves, they got some good ones. Uh, at Orcs, I reckon I've got some good ones here. My favourite, the biggest boss. There, could be a nice upgrade for Gut Ripper. Right, now, are any of these any good to change your mob here to a specialist mob here? Uh, your options are Pyromaniacs, Hunters, Boom Boys, Flyer Boys, Grot Mobs, Tin Eds. <laughs> Feral Orcs and Mad Boys. They all sound like a load of 1980s punk rock groups, but we'll see if they're any good here. All Boss Army. Issue Clan. 
If your armies battle forged, all clan units from an orc detachment, excluding those of super heavy auxiliary detachments, can gain a subculture instead of a clan culture. As long as every unit in that detachment is from the same specialist mob, so you're swapping a clan for a subculture instead. Uh, the subculture gain depends upon the specialist mob they're from. For example, all units from a pyromaniac detachment gain the arsonist subculture. Right. Yeah, okay. This does not prevent you from including other models of the same specialist mob in that detachment. It simply means these models cannot make use of that subculture. Okay, so pyromaniacs get arsonists. You can reroll any and all of the dice to determine the number of shots made for burners, scorchers, burners, burner bottles, burner exhausts, killer jets, and scorcher missiles equipped to models in that unit of that subculture. So if you're going to theme an army around a lot of that kind of pyrotechnics, then uh, you get to reroll the dice. It's very useful. When resolve an attack made by Made with the melee whip profile of a burner equipped on a model with a subculture, you can reroll the wound roll, resolving the burner bomb's ability for a unit with this subculture. Add one to each roll. Hunters, sneaky devils is the ability here. Infantry models only, including excluding Gretchen. Uh, whilst a model in a unit of this subculture is on a, on or within a terrain feature, it gains a five plus invun save. Resolve an attack made with a melee weapon by a model in a unit of this subculture, or that model or any model in the target unit is on or within a terrain feature, improve the weapon's arm penetration characteristic by one. So for example, AP-2 becomes AP-3. So interesting on that one. Uh, next one, Boom Boys, blow it up. Improve the strength and armor penetration characteristics of rocket and stick bomb weapons. These are weapons that have the name rocket or stick bomb in their profile. For example, rocket launcher, stick bomb chucker. Uh, as well as tank buster bombs, wing missiles, cannons, kill cannons, death cannons, da boomer, and lobbers, equipped to models in unit of this subculture uh, by one. So improve the strength and armor penetration characteristic. So, for example, AP minus two becomes AP minus three, and plus one in strength as well. Note that for combi weapons, this bonus only applies to attacks made with the rocket launcher profile. So. Yeah, you're looking at uh, rocket launchers then at strength 9 and AP minus 3. Uh, penetration characteristic of rockets. Yeah, no, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good actually. If you're a fan of that kind of weaponry, that's a, a pretty good bonus actually. Uh, next one, Flyboys. Crucial velocity. Uh, models, or fly models only, when resolve an attack made with a ranged weapon against a unit of this subculture by a model that is more than an inch away, the unit is treated as having the benefit of cover to its saving throw. Oh, okay, pretty good. And when resolve an attack made by a melee weapon against a unit of this subculture in a turn in which it was more than an inch away from enemy units, at the start of the preceding charge phase, subtract one from the hit roll. So a bit of, able to dodge a bit of damage coming in. Grot mobs, cheeky zoggers. Gretchen models only. Models in unit of this subculture gain a 6 plus invun save and resolve an attack by a vehicle model in unit of this subculture. Reroll a hit roll of 1. So if you've got a real Gretchen themed army, which uh, there's some amazing armies out there that people just have pure Gretchens and Grot tanks and so on, then you've got that bonus there. A bit of reward for, uh, for taking that theme. Uh, Tinheads. Crush and Crump. Killer Cans, Death Dreads, Mega Armor. Uh, more Conauts, Gore Conauts and Stompers only. Resolve an attack made by melee weapon by a model in a unit of that subculture. Add one to the hit roll. Ooh. Okay. And then Feral Orcs, Wild Boys. War Boss, Weird Boy, Knobs and Boys only. Excluding Biker and Mega Armor. Models in the unit of the subculture compile in six inches. We're making an advanced roll for a unit of the subculture. Roll two additional dice and discard two of the results. And then finally, Mad Boys. They get frantic. So, infantry and bike units only, excluding Gretchen. At the start of each battle round, roll 1d3 and consult the table below to establish what effect applies to units of this subculture until the end of the battle round. So, it's random each turn. Uh, this roll cannot be rerolled. So, you're going to get either Moronix, resolve an attack that targets a unit of this subculture, add one to the saving throw. Invulnerable saves are unaffected. Next, nutters. Units of this subculture automatically pass morale. And that's okay. And then frenzies. Have wanted strength characteristic models in any unit of this subculture. 
Yeah, that's okay, a bit random. It's not always good, not much control over that. So these are all okay. I guess uh, more rewards here if you go down the route of certain themes for an army. Build an army but based on a theme for orcs, like like a grot army for example, then there is a customised bonus for them. Or you like loads of rockets in your army, then you might want to go up uh, for the boom boys, blow it up option. But uh, more diversity here and a reward if you're going to go for a certain theme with your orcs. So, they're all right. Custom jobs next. So, and there's uh, the mechs have been busy, there's quite a few to choose from. So if your army includes one or more mech boy workshop units, you can give one of the following custom jobs to an orc unit from your army. In addition, you can take custom jobs by using the custom job stratagem. Right, so you need the mech boy workshop, and you can give a custom job to an orc unit from your army, and then you can use the stratagem to take another one. All the custom jobs that you include must be different and be given to different units. Note that some custom jobs are weapons that replace one of the model's existing weapons. Where this is the case, you must, if you're using points values, still pay the cost of the weapon being placed. It's just the usual kind of rules for that. Okay, so. If a unit that has a custom job is treated as a separate unit once they've been deployed, e.g. speed mob or dread mob, all of those units retain the custom job. So you get a custom job on a squad, uh, uh, a number of models from the same unit, but then they're all say you can break up and become separate units during the game. They're all going to get it. So, is it worth it? You need to take the Mech Boy Workshop. You get one of them. You can pay a to take a second. So these are the kind of upgrades you could go for here. Squig Hide Tires. This is Speed Freaks here. Excluding named characters and units that can fly. Battle Wagon, Gun Wagon, Bone Breaker or Truck units only. It's uh, plus two to your move. Quite right, straightforward. Uh, souped up special. This is for a boom dacker snaz wagon. Uh, souped up special replaces the unit's mech special and has the following profile. You get range 30, assault 15, strength 4, AP minus 1 and 1 damage. That's a lot of dice. Uh, the next one, gyroscopic whirly gig. <laughs> this is for the shock jump dragster. You can use this unit's shock jump tunnel ability when advancing, even if you did not roll a 4+. Plus. In addition, this unit does not suffer any mortal wounds as a result of the shock tunnel ability. That sounds helpful enough. Uh, Sizzly Rivets. Custom booster blaster unit only. Resolving an attack made of a rivet cannon by a mod on this unit. An unmodified wound roll of a 6 inflicts a mortal wound on the target in addition to any other damage. So, yeah, it makes them a bit more potent. Uh, corkscrew. Uh, the Mega Track Scrapjet only. The first time this unit finishes a consolidation move in each fight phase, it can immediately fight again. Okay, and then Nitro Powered Squigs. This is for the Rucker Truck Squig Buggy unit only. When resolving an attack made by this unit, Squig Launcher or Heavy Squig Launcher, add one to the wound roll. Uh, Gorks Roar. A Death Killer War Truck model only. Add four to the range characteristic of this model's Killer Jet and change. The type characteristic of its burner profile to assault six. So little boosts here that you can give here. If you're one of these is one of your key units, you really want it to do well. You've got the ability to uh, add on some enhancements here. Uh, De Boomer, battle wagon, bone break, or gun wagon model with a kill cannon only. De Boomer replaces the kill cannon. This is what you get: range 36, heavy 2d6, strength eight minus two and two damage. Yep, yeah, that's a good upgrade. That is a good upgrade, that one. Hmm. I like the sound of that. 2d6 shots. Nice. Double the number of shots. And you're getting the... Yeah, it's pretty good, that one. Uh, Zag Zap. Battle wagon, bone breaker, or gun wagon model with a zap gun. It replaces it, and you get range 36. Heavy one. Strength is 2d6. AP minus 3, and 3 damage. Resolve an attack made by this weapon. Do not make a hit roll. It automatically scores a hit before firing this weapon. Roll to determine the strength of the shot. If it's nine or more, do not make a wound roll. Inflict three mortal wounds on the target and the attack sequence ends. It's also hits. Yes, that's a potent weapon, that one. Pretty good. It's not going to take a vehicle down, but it's uh, 
pretty accurate, uh, Forktress. Battle wagon, bone break or gun wagon model only. The model has a save characteristic of 3 plus and a 5 plus in bun save. Nice. Oh, good upgrade as well, that one. Next is Pincher. Model with a grabbing claw only. Pincher replaces the grabbing claw. You get plus one strength, hit minus three, and d6 damage. Each time the bearer fights, it can make a single attack with this weapon. Resolve an attack made with this weapon, add three to the hit roll if the target is a vehicle or monster. Uh, red Roller. But, uh, bone Breaker model only. So I, I run one of these. Replace the model's Bone Breaker RAM ability with the following Red Roller. Uh, when this model makes a charge move, add 6 to its attacks characteristic until the end of the turn. So, more attacks. Yeah, brilliant. Add uh, Orchimatic Pistons. Killer Cans, Death Dreads, Morkonaut or Gorkonaut. Uh, unit only. Add 3 inches to the unit's move characteristic and you can reroll advanced rolls made for the unit. Then Sparkly Gits. Bits, sorry, sparkly bits. Killer cans, death dreads, morconaut or gorkonaut unit only. Improve the unit's ballistic skill by one. So ballistic skill five plus becomes four plus. Wow, a little bit of help there. God. Killer cans. Killer can unit gets it. So hang on, so they can kill a cans of a four plus ballistic skill anyway, so they could go to a three plus. Wow. Yeah, pretty good that one. Yeah, some of these are pretty good. Uh, dirty gubbins. Killer cans, death dreads, unit only. When resolving attack made by range weapon against this unit, it's minus one to the hit roll. Uh, slug gubbin, Gorkonaut model only, replaces the Death Storm Mega Shooter, and you get Oh, wow. Range 36, heavy 24. <laughs> Strength 6, minus 1 and 1 damage. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, that's fantastic. Resolve an attack made by this weapon. If the target is within 12 inches when the bearer was chosen to shoot with, add 1 to the hit roll. Oh, <laughs> very good. Very, very cool. That's a ton of shots on a Gorkonaut. Nice. Uh, gog, gog claw. It's not cog. It's gog claw. Gorkonaut, Morkonaut model only. Result rolling to determine the damage characteristic of the crush profile of the bearer's claw of gork or possibly mork. Rolls of less than four count as four. And then Glitzer Gatler, Stomper only. The model Super Gatler has a damage characteristic of two. In addition, rolling for the weapon's Psycho Dacker ability, you re-roll the d6 once per phase. So that's a bit of help there as well. Okay, so yeah, some pretty good ones. Right, so now you've got uh, clan specific psychic powers. You've got your standard psychic powers for the orcs, and then now they give you an extra one, depending on uh, which of these clans you go for. So, goths then, ball charge. Ball charge is a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select one friendly goth unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. At the end of the turn, charge distances of less than 7 rolled for that unit. After modifiers, count as 7. Yep, yeah, not bad. Death Skull's Maniacal Seizure. It's a warp charge value of 7. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. To the start of your next Psychic phase, resolve an attack made by that unit. Subtract one from the hit roll. And when resolve an attack made by a friendly Death Scars model against that unit, improve the armor penetration characteristic of the weapon by one for that attack. So AP-2 becomes AP-3. Bad Moons, Gleaming Gear. There's a warp charge value of 6. If manifested, select one Bad Moons unit within 18 of the Psyker. To the start of your next Psychic phase, when resolve an attack made against that unit, add one to the saving throw. Doesn't affect inbounds. So a bit of help there. Snake bites construction. There's a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select one enemy unit within, within 12 inches of the psyker. To the start of the next psychic phase, halve the attacks characteristic of models in that unit. Yeah, yeah. Useful. Yep, yeah, definitely helpful. Evil Suns, visions in the smoke. There's a warp charge value of six. If manifested, select one friendly evil sun's vehicle unit from your army within 12 inches of the Psyker. You can only select a unit of a wounds characteristic of 18 inches or more if the result of the Psychic test to manifest the Psychic power is 9 or more. To the start of the next Psychic phase, when resolving an attack made by one unit, you can re-roll the hit roll. 
Are you on your tax? Yeah, okay. That vehicle, useful. Uh, Blood X is clever talk. So walk charge value of six. If manifested, select one enemy visible, enemy unit visible to the psyker. To the start of the next psychic phase, that unit cannot fire overwatch at Blood X units in your army. It cannot be chosen to fight until all eligible Blood X units from your army have chosen to do so. Yeah, all right, helpful. For sure, free booters now finally. Jolly Orcs Glare. So walk charge value of six. If manifested, select one enemy unit of an 18 inches of the psych into the start of your next psychic phase. Halve the move characteristic of models in that unit and subtract one from advance and charge rolls made for it. It's a bit of disruption there for the enemy as well. Yeah, so they're okay. Those extra psychic powers. Random name generator. And then that is it. Just closes with a picture of orcs fighting against the space orcs. So that's the review there for the orcs. I think. Uh, they've done well. This really, I really rate some of those stratagems for the Orcs. I think I'll be making use of some of those. So, uh, pretty good for them. So I think both factions have done well with this uh, Psychic Awakening. So they've been rewarded with some really good stuff. So I think both, uh, whoever collects either of these, you know, you should, I think it should be happy enough with the uh, results that have come through here. Uh, some decent upgrades for sure. But that's the full review, a bit of tactica there, just getting a flavour of uh, what I might use for my own orc army as well. But I'll definitely be referring to this and using some of the bonuses for my space orbs and then also for the orcs as well. But that's the review. Check out gamingfigures.com for your discount 40k. Links in the video description below. Thanks to Games Workshop for them to set, uh, for sending me this copy ahead of time. Check out part one for the Space Wolves. Keep a look out for more reviews. I've done reviews for all the Psychic Awakening books, uh, so you can check those out on the channel. And then keep a look out for battle reports featuring these two armies, uh, both here on YouTube and then over on the Plus channel as well. That's the review. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.